this is the first part of a tutorial on making a drive around collecting game. In this version of the game, the car drives around collecting rubies and getting 10 points. And if it collects an emerald, it gets 100 points. Open the file made in the previous tutorial. You can make this file yourself or download it from my website. Click the start button to start the game engine. Press the forward arrow and the space bar to break. Press the forward arrow and the left arrow to make the car spin round. Press escape to end the game engine. I'm going to set the camera up so that it tracks the car. I'm selecting the camera in the outliner window. I'm going to scroll up to display the logic brick controls. Click the add actuator button and add a camera actuator. I'm going to the blender wiki for details about the actuator. It makes the camera follow or track an object. The camera object field you set the name of the object. In the height field you set the height you want the camera to try to be above the object. In the X in the axis field you set the local axis you want the camera to try and point along. The minimum and maximum distance is the distance you want the camera to try and be behind the object and the damping, the strength of the constraint that drives the camera behind the target, how quickly you want the camera pushed into the positions that you've set. So I'm going to set the object to be the car, the height to be 5 blender units, the local axis to the car it's pointing in the plus y direction. I want the camera to try and be 20 blender units behind the car and I'm going to set the damping to be 0.5, add an always sensor and and controller and connect that up. It will only work if we're looking through the camera so in the view menu set the view to camera start the game engine and as we drive around the camera will try to be behind the car to set the scene up I'm going to change the layout to default in the view menu I'm going to toggle quad view I'm going to select the ground plane and click the material button I'm going to click the add new material button and I'm going to name the new material ground. Click the diffuse color and I'm going to set the diffuse color to a pale orangey brown. Click the world button and set the horizon color to blue. I'm going to import some gemstones for the car to drive around and collect. I made the gemstones in a previous tutorial. You can either make them yourself or download them from my website. In the file menu choose append. Go to the folder where the gemstones file is saved. Select the gemstones file. Go into the object folder. Select a gemstone and click the append button. In the top view zoom back with the mouse wheel. Pan, shift and drag with the middle mouse button. Select the ruby Turn the 3D manipulator widget on, drag on the tip of the green arrow to move the ruby forward and the tip of the red arrow to move it to the side. Go to the object properties of the ruby, set the Z value to be 1 to move the ruby up. To import the emerald, file append. The emerald is called gem, I didn't rename it. Select it and append. Make sure the emerald is selected and I will rename it. I'm going to set the Z height to be 1 and move it forward using the tip of the green arrow. To see how things look in the game engine, change the layout to game logic, change the shading to textured, click the plus to open up the properties panel, scroll down open up display, scroll down, change shading to GLSL and close the panel. 
Press the start button to start the game engine, press the forward arrow and the car crashes into the emerald. I notice the gems are a bit dull, so I'm going to press escape, click the material button, scroll down to the shading panel and set emit to 0.5. Select the ruby and do the same, 0.5 and enter. When the car drives into the emerald, I want the emerald to disappear and the score to go up by 100. I'm going to add a near sensor and when any object comes near the emerald that will send a signal. I'm going to add an edit object actuator and the edit object function I'm going to choose is end object and that will make the emerald disappear and I'm going to add a message actuator and the message that will be broadcast will be score 100. Connect that up through an AND gate signal goes straight through the AND controller to the actuators and when I click the start button and press the forward arrow the emerald disappears. How do we display the score? Well I'm going to add an empty. I'm going to move the empty to the side. An empty is just a dummy object that won't be displayed at runtime. I'm going to go to its object properties and rename it game. I'm going to click the plus here to add a game property to the empty and I'm going to call that property score. I'm going to change its type to integer and its initial value 0 and I'm going to click this button to print debug information and in the game menu tick this option show debug properties. Now when we start the embedded player the score will be displayed in the top left hand corner. Drag to close the properties panel. Now how do we update the score? Well I'm going to add a sensor, a message sensor and that will listen for broadcast messages. If I set the subject to score 100 the broadcast message subject must match that exactly and it's case sensitive. When we receive the message what are we going to do? Well, if I add a property actuator the property affected is the score. The mode to add a value of 100 to the score. And if we connect that up through an AND controller and start the embedded player, when I press the forward arrow, the emerald disappears and the score goes up to 100. I want the ruby to behave in a similar way to the emerald. I want to copy the logic bricks from the emerald to the ruby. To do this, select the ruby first, hold down shift and select the emerald and the order is critical. Go to the object menu, scroll up until you see game and in the sub menu select copy logic bricks. Now if I select the ruby alone, it has the same logic bricks as the emerald. I want to change the message broadcast to score 10. I only want the ruby to score 10 points. When the score 10 message is broadcast, I need some logic bricks to pick up the message and process it. If I select the empty, I need similar logic bricks to the ones that process the score 100 message. So I'd like to duplicate these logic bricks, but I don't know any way of doing that. I can duplicate the empty and I will get the logic bricks that will process the message but I'd end up with two empties and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to add a message sensor. The subject to sense is score 10. Add a property actuator. Now I need some room so I'm going to close up these gates. Before I do that it's a good idea to give them meaningful names so I'm going to give this the name score 100 and this the name add 100 and now I'm going to click on the white triangle to close up the gates. It's the score property I want to add 10 this time. Add an AND controller and connect that up. Now when we start the game 
and going through the Ruby adds 10. That's the end of the first part of the tutorial. In the next part, I'll show you how to add sound effects and how to make the gemstones spin. I'll put the start file and the end file for you to download at my website www.freemovies.co.uk at the Blender channel there. Thanks for watching.